Welcome to the Art of Authority podcast, bringing you interviews and episodes to help you radically optimize your authority and influence to become the go-to expert in your field. Here's your host, Authority Positioning Coach, Mike Saunders. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach, and today we have with us Robert Glazer, who is the CEO and founder of Acceleration Partners and the author of international best-selling book, Performance Partnerships. Welcome to the program, Robert. Hey Mike, how are you? Hey, doing great. And when I interviewed you on my podcast a few months ago, and then I decided to do this summit, obviously, authority and influence, who do you want to talk to, but people that know the business and and are doing big things. So that's where I circle back with you because you are providing a bridge, in my opinion, people that finally realize I need to be playing in this space, but then how do I do it? So give us a little bit of background of uh, your company, what you focus on doing, then we'll get into just some really good practical, tactical things that people can be doing in their business. Sure. So Acceleration Partners is uh, the leading performance marketing firm in the U.S. We help launch and manage affiliate programs and performance partner programs for large brands such as Target, Adidas, Jimboree, Reebok, and uh, we help generate over about a billion and a half in revenue for our clients in their programs last year. So we're, we're really just fo- we're focused on performance. We think that the future of marketing is more win-win relationships. And whether you want to call it affiliate marketing or performance marketing or performance partnerships, we just think that the, the, the trends that, you know, you've been seeing something like bo- blockchain these days are towards, you know, efficiency, speed, transparency, and, 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 and trust. And, and we think that, when someone can deliver a customer or a lead or an action and people can pay them for that action, there's just not a better form of marketing. Well, I agree with you. And the the aha moment I think a lot of people have is when they realize if I pay for any kind of an advertising campaign, it doesn't matter what we're thinking of, you know, Google ads, Facebook ads, you know, anything online, um, you're paying up front and hoping for a result with these kinds of relationships you are paying once the sale is made. Yeah, we talk about the difference between paying for inputs and paying for outcomes. And I've, I've given speeches in front of large rooms and I say, raise your hand if you, you would rather pay for inputs and raise your hand if you want to pay for outcomes. And of course, everyone says outcomes, but no one is, is, is really doing that in yeah. reality. And it just requires both some methodology rethink and some technology and to build a program that's just based on, on results. But the companies that are doing this and are doing it at scale or having a huge uh, success with it? Well, I, 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 we could talk uh, until the cows come home about all the changes in online advertising and, you know, yeah. the Facebook ads and all of these things. And well, now let's put another filter in and, and, you know, only show the ads if there's engagement at this level. Um, so doesn't uh, a performance partnership influencer marketing type campaign help to get, around some things like that because in reality some influencer is marketing on their platform and if they are an influencer and authority then they've kind of passed through those levels to where now you really are cutting through the clutter i would think yeah the biggest difference is that the technology becomes the the means and not the ends you know in programmatic the computers took over and people had no idea what was running where and were disgusted to find out you know the types of websites they were running on and the messages and how their brand was being used and the real difference in what we're talking about is trying to have that same sort of automation and, and programmatic element by scaling a lot of partners onto a single platform. But these folks have their own audiences. They are the, the merchandising you know, experts, and they really want to control that. If they like a product and they want to talk about it, when you think of some of the brands that are really growing quickly, the publishers, the news sites, and BuzzFeed, and Wirecutter, which is owned by the New York Times, you know, these are entirely affiliate-based models that are driven by the publisher dealing with the merchandising and saying, look, yeah. I don't want to tell you to tell me where and how to run it. Just give me the catalog, and I, I like this cooler. I'm going to write about this cooler and put a review on it. I, I don't want you running a dynamic ad on the cooler. I'm, I'm, I'm writing about coolers that are good for suburban yuppies, not coolers that are good for whatever. So right. there's been a big disconnect in that. You know, I think a lot of even the networks were, were touting these programmatic type features and people saying, look, if I want a programmatic, I just I'd run a programmatic banner ad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking to to make the merchandising decisions for my audience. And that's what an influencer does. And, and, and a 
tacky influencer, an influencer just sells their opinion, you know, that works for a little while, but the best ones are authentic and they, they yeah. turn down offers and they say, look, I, they're even writing about the thing if they're not paid and then getting paid is a, a benefit on top of that. So that those are the folks who are most successful in the long run. It, it reminds me of um, product placement, like on TV and things yeah. like that. So isn't it similar in the sense that, you know, the camera just spans and passes this bag sitting on the table from Walmart and kind of doesn't even pause and focus, but just kind of makes it apparent. So it's not um, placed in there for any other reason other than, oh, it just kind of is in your mind. So uh, the point is when you put some programmatic or in your face ads, people know it's an ad. But if you do it the right way, it feels like it's part of the conversation. Yeah, you know, the, uh, people just, they, they start jamming all of these trendy terms together. I mean, that, yeah. last year, someone said something about native something programmatic. I was like, yeah. what? there was like a complete oxymoron. The right, right. Out to me. So people are talking about native, you know, native programmatic. I, I, yeah, it's like, look, these are real people or magazines or people taking an opinion or talking about something or they don't have to be endorsing it. They could be, you know, they could be, uh, it's not a stamp of approval. I could be talking about the pros or the cons or how it compares or, 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 or a list, but it's just not a, Hey, buy here. And when people dug in, particularly on mobile and programmatic, they found out eight ninety percent of these, we had a client who said 90% of these ads were fraudulent pop under, you know, out of the way when you're just running on impression stuff. I, I find it fascinating that 10 years ago you would have gotten fired for buying banner ads and, yeah. and somehow it all came back with new uh, terms. Bigger. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's think about someone that wants to um, delve into this because in this summit, we're talking about authority, influence, expertise, and yeah. getting that out there. Well, in our own little pond as an entrepreneur, now you work with major brands, but let's kind of even dive in a little deeper and think about how, uh, what's the size of a brand that should be considering this? Because maybe yeah. a, an entrepreneur isn't saying, I'm not Revlon, I can't work with you, but should they be considering an affiliate type revenue share relationship to get the word out about their business? Yes. Yeah, so this is a little bit of depends about how you want to use it. You can, I think most brands should think about an affiliate program and staffing a program and opening that up once they get to a million in revenue. It's hard to have the scale below that. But let's say you were doing a lot of partner stuff and business development. You might be better off licensing SaaS or signing up for a network and starting to go to all these partners. And, and it's not an affiliate program and it doesn't have to be open, but saying, look, um, we, here's how it works. You sign up here, you get an account. Remember, this handles all the payment, and direct deposit, and tax forms and all that stuff. Let me set you up with some links you can pull from our catalog. And you could almost treat some of your early business development partners. And this is funny to me, all this blockchain stuff around smart contracts and payment and transparency. That, that's what these tracking platforms have always been. Like, how do you, yeah. when you put something in biz dev and you're talking three months to get a contract and then they read the, they read it and then they come back with edits. And I, I think last night on my iPhone, I accepted an upgrade and I probably gave them the right to sell all my pictures online. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, just, I just accept it. So, I mean, I, I, that the contracting aspect just becomes um, a lot easier with a system like this as well. So what kind of, uh, you mentioned a, a dollar figure, you know, a million dollars in revenue, and I'm certain that that's in some worlds, but what about someone that has, you know, a shop of five or 10 employees, they're not at a million dollars. Yeah. Is there a way to use some of these techniques of partnering with people with a revenue share, maybe not tapping into major brands, yeah. but the mindset, the the philosophy of you've got people access to people that I want to get access to. We don't sell competing brands. How right. do we work together? Isn't it that uh, kind of like partnering up at, in an industry? Yeah, I, I think it's, 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 it's funny. It's where I was, I was just doing some, my daughter's babysitting and I was doing some like pricing role play with her because people are always asking her like, how much do you charge? <laughs> and I was saying, look, it's really, sometimes it's about how you say something in the confidence. So let's let, in that example, right? What would happen is these stores would start talking and, Oh, we should work together. And how can we work together? And let's think about, imagine that versus, Hey, we actually have a program for this. You just sign up on our website, you get an account, you pick the link, I'll change your rate. You can be up and going tomorrow. Yeah. You know, all this, we should do something and the, it just gets replaced by, we have a program. Like if you want a different rate, if you want a different duration, like I can go yeah. change those in the things. But, but this notion that each of these deals needs to be different versus you have a, a, a program that people join and 
if you, oh, do you need a different banner or you want access? Let me put that in the, in the system for you right. and then you can pull it down. And, and I think that at, at the end of the day, it just gets down to, we want to do a good job for people. And this partner that you're developing, um, you have to treat them like your best yeah. client. Right. Yeah. And, and you can't just have this little burst and go, Hey, great. You did this action or blog this or posted that. Right. That'd be consistent. So let's talk about consistency from both sides of the equation, right? You can't just say, I am an influencer. I want to promote these products, do it one time and let the money roll in. And you can't be a publisher or a product or service and say, Hey, I want to get th- this partnership started and I know they'll do the right thing and just hope that it goes on cruise control. Yeah, the four elements that we say a performance partnership has and where it differs from, in some cases, from affiliate marketing, in some cases it doesn't, there's a CPA payout, you know, cash on delivery. That's the, that's the, you know, the core tenant is, is you get paid when you get what you want. But then there's transparency and, and, and there's relationships and an ongoing partnership. And that actually is different from a lot of affiliate marketing historically because it was very transactional. It was like, I don't know who they are or care who they are. If I got the sale, and if I don't like the sale, I'll credit it. What's different now is that, again, people are being more open and they're being partnership oriented and they're communicating and they say, hey, Mike, um, I, we're launching a new product this week. We've got some uh, creative that you could support it. Is there anything that you need? You should reach out. And there's human, this is what I said before, there's a lot of human involved. Yeah. This world is 50% technology. The technology is the part that makes it scale. The technology is for me to, I can have these relationships, but I'm not, sending you a spreadsheet and sending you a spreadsheet and an invoice and a check. It just, it allows me to layer on a lot of these partnerships, but it requires the same sort of BD interaction that you would have. Yep. And the fourth tenant, which is embedded in this real time tracking and payment. So part of the reinforcement cycle, you know, in the old world, I give you a code, you send the people to me, I run a report, I send it to you, you send me an invoice, I pay it. That's like four months, right? So you find out, three months later when I send you this report in this world, you would see, Oh my, I made $500 yesterday. What did I do? Oh, clearly yeah. my clients like, so that real time feedback uh, really helps the loop of some people find out when I first started <laughs> in, in this uh, space years ago, I talked about this in the book, you know, they, the, the, the company had built me a real time tracker for my code. And one day around it got to be, you know, your black Friday. And I saw that I made a thousand dollars and, that was really motivating. You know, yeah. if they hadn't given me that access, I would have found out a month later, say, oh, if I knew that, I would have stayed up all night and yeah. double what I was doing. Strike while the iron's hot. Right. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. And here's something else. I've noticed this trend um, lately in the last few months where people are talking more uh, more and more about the advertising platforms that are getting so restrictive, right? And and they're coming back to the the principles of old relationships, and yeah. relationship marketing. And what I would say is what you're proposing is this is the the marriage of best of both worlds. Yeah. So it's using some technology, using some trackability so that we can monetize this relationship. But you can't just plop them in a software and go have a night, you know, go to town. You've got to develop that relationship. You've got to still. And, and that gives you a competitive team. advantage. And, yes. and so we, we, we have a, a client that just launched a program that's part of a, a very large multi-billion dollar brand. And they want some awareness quickly, you know, and, and so we all the tracking is set up, but our team calls some folks, calls in some favors, you know, Hey, you know, I can get you a really good rate on this. They've got some money to spend. Here's what we're going to do for you. Can you get this up for me tomorrow? You know, that is where the human piece layers on top of the technology. Yeah. And what I, why I like it is because look, SEO, PPC, you're only as good as the last penny you're willing to spend, right? And the next person, SEO, there are these tools that can tell me your entire strategy and what you're focused on and your keywords and all that stuff. I can't just come online with one of these programs and, and knock you off. I, there's a lot of relationships and stuff that is built up there. So I, I, I just find the competitive advantage in these sort of programs is much more sustainable. You know, I want to pause on this relationship and competitive advantage because I think a lot of people hear relationships and going deep and, you know, Bob Berg, I interviewed him in his book, The Go-Giver, and he's got a new book out, The Go-Giver Influencer, and we're just tying all this together. I think too many times people hear it and they, they agree with it and then they just go right back to their old ways, right? Yeah. You know, they're, they're just like, yeah, but it's so easy to push this button. But to your point, how long does a Facebook ad, CPC ad 
remain as long yeah. as you keep feeding the machine. And sometimes it's not even a, an efficient machine. So those relationships are where, that, where it's at. And you, you can even feel confident in that relationship because if someone else comes along, they just don't pay attention because it's like me and Bob, come on, we've got a thing. And, and look, we represent brands. So, so we always say the partner program that we run has its own brand as much as the brand does. Yeah. So we represent brands where people will work with us because they like how we work and they trust us and they will do something that they would not have done for another brand. There are some brands out there whose programs have a terrible represent, you know, reputation, reputation for getting back to people slowly, not doing what they say they're going to do, you know, coming to them and saying, Oh, we made a mistake. We're taking back all your money. And, 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 and no matter how good the, the brand is if the if the if the if the trust and the partnership brand isn't there then then they just don't have as much success it's like the you're only as strong as your weakest link yeah and and sometimes the best marketing is a job well done you know so you can do all this you can have the best website in the world and all this great marketing and get customers customers sale 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 and then if you don't deliver and the product doesn't do what it says in the customer service. And all of a sudden, all that was for naught. So boy, that the encouragement is to have that holistic, integrated balance right. with everything from the product to the marketing, to the partnership, to the relationship. And then right. when that happens, and, and it sounds so easy to say that, but. Yeah. Well, you also, right. it's not all, I mean, you, I think you earn your trust in, in some of your worst periods, right? We, yeah. you know, there's a lot of data to show and in books that a, a problem resolved results in a customer that is happier than before there was the, was the problem. Um, I mean, we made a really bad mistake earlier this week, uh, which I'll talk about soon on a, we had everything go wrong on a podcast that we were hosting with a very well-known busy person. And, you know, we <laughs> backup broke, every, everything broke. Now we could just say, ah, it is what it is. We said, look, it's on us. Like we should have had a fourth backup. And by the way, we uh, really respect your time. And so here is uh, actually a donation that we've made in your name um, to value that. And, you know, the person offered to, to, to come back and do it again. And again, you have a chance in those times to really establish that relationship and say, well, I can trust this person. They're going to, yeah. they're going to do the right thing when the rubber hits the road. You know, that uh, I've thought that and said that for years, but I'm glad to hear that you have alluded to research where, if you are expecting this service and you get that service, you're a happy customer. In fact, um, in, in, in other words, what you want is raving fans. I did this uh, presentation two, three nights ago, and I said, raise your hands. Um, how many people want happy customers? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, yeah. you want raving fans. A happy customer is complacent. They're like, yeah, okay, that's fine. I can take it or leave it. Raving fans. So to, to the point of, I've, I've jokingly said this, so I would never orchestrate this, but it's almost like you want to start a relationship off and, and orchestrate a hiccup so that you can come in and yeah. save the day so that they're like, oh, you're so awesome. You would never do that because then that would backfire on you, I'm certain. But yeah. um, I think that that is so huge is if and when something happens, be authentic and human and go, look, yeah. look not to make excuses, but the reason is we had nine backups. We should have had 10. And right. so I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's on us. You did an awesome job. Here's what we're going to do. If you feel, you know, if you, if you feel it in your, in your soul to come back in the house and, and, and if they, if you had just handled that, like, sorry, here's the deal. They would have been like enraged, but yet you went and did some extra things. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, yeah, yeah, people have, have canceled on me five minutes before a podcast that they had asked me on or forget to tell me they're on vacation and, and they just say, sorry, you know, and yeah. like, it's like, look, I'm not coming back on your pod. Like, Right, right. <laughs> you don't seem to value my time at all, right? So I, I, I do really think it is how we, you know, act in those moments that some of the basis of of real relationships are formed. Well, I was just thinking when you said that the word partnership, it goes both ways, isn't? Yeah. I mean, your partners in this relationship, and I'm sure that there's some, you know, a ta uh, um, you know, Latin root that means something, but I'm just thinking just logically if you're in a relationship and you're talking about performance partnerships, a partner gives and t gives a hundred percent. And then the other partner gives a hundred percent so that you, you guys yeah. are all in. So kind of speak to some of the, the mistakes that people make when they finally see this light bulb and they go, I will start developing strategic alliances and partnerships and, and revenue shares. What are some things that people need to watch to avoid? 
I think you just need to avoid the wrong incentives. You need to make sure that, uh, you know, one of my favorite quotes and I use in the book is Charlie Munger, which is show me the incentive and I'll tell you the behavior. I mean, I, sometimes I get that wrong, but that's the, that's the general spirit of the, of the quote. So sometimes you may think that we want to reward X and the partner is driving that behavior and it's actually not the right outcome when you go look at, oh yeah, he's getting a lot of leads, but we're calling all these people and they're, and they're not interested. So I think they're, then in, in the transparency, you could, here's what some people do. Hey, your leads suck. We're cutting your commission and we're, you know, blah, blah, blah. That, that's one way to do it. The other way would be like, Mike, we're looking at these leads. They're not converting. Can you tell me a little about where they're coming from? I really don't want to have to lower your commission. I'd actually rather that we could find a way to up the quality, but I'm yeah. not going to be able to pay for these at, at this price. So there's two ways of handling the same thing. And a lot of times we're an important buffer between our client and, and, and the partner in terms of having that discussion and tone it down where the client is all upset that the outcome's not there. They want to tell the partner to go, you know, bleep and bleep. And we're like, look, let's, <laughs> you know, maybe they're just doing the wrong thing. Let's, yeah. let, let's talk about it. Let's look at the data. Let's take it to them. Now, if we take it to the partner and they're like, look, I deserve to make money. I don't care how well your business is doing. That's a good sign that that's probably not a good partner. Yeah. You know, I read this a few years ago, and I don't know whether it was your book, but the example you just mentioned um, made me think of this. Um, this one guy goes, when I have people come out to my house to quote me to do work, the tendency is, give me the lowest price, and then I'm going to negotiate and barter to get low, 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 low. But he goes, uh-uh, what I do is I look at the invoice and I say, this is not going to work. And the person goes, oh, I can lower it. And he goes, oh, no, 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 I want to pay you 20% more than this. And the person goes, what? He goes, this invoice you are giving me, this quote you're giving me is for this job. And I think you'll do a good job on the job. But if I give you 20% more, you are going to focus on it. You are going to bring your A game and I want to pay you more than this. And, and this person, this, this example of the, the uh, author was saying that they get such great results. And that goes right back yeah. to, to the leads. It's, it's not necessarily, um, you know, belittling that person. Oh, your leads are horrible, but it's, it could be like, you know what? I've researched your brand and you've got some great opportunity. We're just not digging in deep enough to get those leads. What do you think if we did this or would this be feasible? And I think that that comes full circle back to that word partnership. Cause if you're in a partnership, you're approaching it the right way and then they're willing to listen. Right. Yeah. And in partnership, I, I have an article coming out on this too, but a oh, partnership cool. It starts with what you can do to the other people. I love when people write me all the time, we'd like to talk about a partnership with your company. Well, let's dig into that. What they want me to do is to sell their thing to my clients. Yep. Like That's not a partnership, and I can't imagine anyone applies to this email. When yep. I've written emails on a partnership and, and when I get a 90% response rate are, hey, uh, dear Mike, um, you know people are asking us for this service, and we don't do it, and we're really looking for a partner to send these referrals to. Do you think you could jump on the phone? Yeah. You're going to, you're going to jump on the phone, right? But when, when, when people say partnership bailed as I'd like you to do something for me. Yeah. Yeah. Really a partnership is about, you know, doing for others first and, and, and showing that you're a good partner. I look, there's no, I, we have a lot of people approach us and there's nothing I can't stand more than they talk about this partnership. And then there's a list of things that we can do to help them. Yeah. Yep. And it's like, I'm sorry, what was your last name again? Because I don't remember where we even met, if we even met, but what? Yeah, I yeah. think that's huge. So so let's now talk about some of the upsides for uh, you know the small to medium-sized brands that are looking to get into this. I mean, of course, the larger brands, it's kind of like you're a locomotive going down the track. So a little bit of polish here, tweak there, it's, it's just amplifying it. But for the people that are, are looking to start developing these performance partnerships, what are some of those upsides that they can look uh, to achieve? In terms of the financial upside? Or- yeah, financial. And even I, I would even interject into that m- potential other project opportunities because you've got this going and, the, and that trust is being built and they go, you know what, I've got this other idea. And maybe it then builds from there and you never knew that that opportunity existed. Yeah, well, one of the opportunities I don't think people realize is that you could be reciprocal, right? You might decide that you actually have traffic that you can oh, monetize yeah. for other people's offers and that as you start testing this, you realize you can be a really good publisher. So you, you, you do this well. I think the other opportunity for, for small and medium is just more businesses are going direct to their customers. Right? Yeah. So as they go direct to their customers, then they find the people that are, are advocates of that brand and, and you partner with them and you work with them. It's becoming much harder to be a, to be a middleman um, in, the, yeah. uh, in the internet world. 
in the Amazon in the Amazon world, I should say. Yeah, the the because what did they? You know, which which mega uh, organization did they buy yesterday? I mean, it's just all yeah. the time something. So yeah, you're exactly right. Um, but it, but it just comes down to relationships. So let's speak a little bit a little bit about your um the the de- deliverable for your software, your company. What does that yeah. look like for someone that wants to explore? You know, I'm a brand slash publisher. I need to get a, an audience or, you know, I have an audience. I want to monetize it. What does that look like? Yeah. So if you're a brand and you're thinking about an affiliate program, there are tons of resources on our site at accelerationpartners.com kind of one on one how do I think about this? When do I get started? You probably want to look at some uh, lower cost affiliate networks and think about a, a cheap way to, to, to set your program up and not have to have a lot of minimums and, and, and costs as you get going. If you're someone out there, you said, I have influence, I have content. Uh, how do I get connected to uh, all of these programs? You probably want to work with a company like Brand Cycle that uh, is, a, is a company that we spun off years ago. What they do is they simplify all the issues about working in the affiliate space. Because in the affiliate space, you got to join these networks and platforms and find these programs. They've just found the three or 400 programs that everyone wants, and they've integrated it. So you can join once, be part of those programs, get paid with one check, get ideas and all kinds of stuff, and not have to learn how to be an affiliate. Uh, a lot of bloggers or people that have influence sign up and just the next day they're monetizing the traffic that they have already. What, in that example, what are some of the brands, you know, like for instance, um, how broad are the brand offerings that you could, you know, and I'm sure it just changes all the time, right? Yeah, it changes and actually respond. They respond to requests. So they say, Hey, I want to work oh, yeah. for this brand. Can you go get us integrated? But it's a lot of the brands in the lifestyle market. So we yeah. try to follow from, you know, people who are getting married to having kids to buying furniture and home that, that those tend to be the brands that people use kind of over and over again. But it's like the 80 20 rule. I, we find it's better to go find the 20% of programs that yeah. are driving 80% of the volume for people and, yeah. and make those uh, accessible work. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, let's just wrap up with what is the best way that people can pick up a copy of your book, performance partnerships and reach out and learn a little bit more about your programs. Sure. Yeah. Best way is to go to performance-partnerships.com. You can download the first chapter for free there. Check it out. See if you like it and all the digital links. We're actually, um, depending on when this runs, it's going on a couple week campaign, the digital version for 99 cents. So you may be able to even get that for 99 cents over the next few weeks. And uh, there's a lot of resources at accelerationpartners.com. And if you want to find any more information about me, uh, you can go to my Robert S as in Sam Glazer.com website. Awesome. Well, Robert, thank you so much for your time. It was great catching up with you again. Thanks, Mike. You've been listening to the Art of Authority podcast. Are you interested in building your authority positioning as the number one strategy to grow your business, brand, and influence? Book your authority audit today. This seven-point audit of your current authority position will uncover opportunities and show you how to be seen as a leading expert and authority your industry looks to for advice. Visit www.authoritypositioningcoach.com. 